Hey guys, Alex the Kaiju fan coming at you with another video. Today's gonna be the second episode of Die Kaiju Clash um, with Pry Lion and Hidora the Douchebag. Is... Well, guys, which battle do you wanna do? And I'm gonna do it's a you, it's you. I'm it's gonna you. do a ra I'm gonna do a randomization with all the Godzilla characters. Okay, so well, all the all the Godzilla variations. I'm just checking. All right, all right. Um, I'm trying to think of one right now. Okay, I got one. Godzilla 1975 versus Godzilla 2000. Mmm, that one's actually good. Thanks. That one was, that's one. 75 meaning like Terra of Mechagodzilla and uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, right? Yep. Right. Which means that he's already had a lot of battle experience to begin Wait, with. Wait, shouldn't you also put Megagurus into the 2000? Um, I mean, if you kind want. Kind of? I mean, I get, like, kind of. Well, it's technically different Godzilla because it's an alternate reality that Toho never really touched on. I know, but, like, technically they're, they're still the same thing. So, like, they're still the same. Well, actually, they... Well, I don't know, actually. I didn't think about that. It's weird. Like, I, I, don't, I really don't understand that movie. I honestly really enjoyed that movie, but at the same time, putting it into a timeline perspective, it's actually Yeah, really it doesn't horrible. make any sense. Actually, all the Godzilla movies don't make any sense in a timeline perspective. I don't think Godzilla movies were supposed to make sense to begin with. Alright, so, uh, you wanna uh, introduce the stats first? Since you said... So, I'll first start off by going to introduce Godzilla in 1975. Yes. Godzilla in this time period had already been through many battles, through the likes of the giant cockroach, Megalon, Gigant, and Godzilla also gained even more fighting experience through his adventures with Zone Fighter, where he took on the gargoyle forces. Here, Godzilla has just been through a terrible fight with the villainous Mechagodzilla and Titanosaurus. At the end of the movie, we see Godzilla leaving, hopefully for good. It turns out that Godzilla 2000 will now be his next opponent as these titans will clash in an epic brawl. It's really cool, actually. Thanks. You didn't go over his stats. I know, but I was just giving the introduction. Oh, okay, okay. You know, to give him more dr drama to it. First off on our competitors list, we got Godzilla 1975. Here, Godzilla has a lot of powers. For example, he can do the infamous drop kick. Godzilla also has the weird ability of flying. I doubt that ability will come into use for this battle as that is a pretty irrelevant and once in a time use ability that is only used for jokes like for example in the Godzilla PS3 game. Here Godzilla's atomic breath has gotten extremely powerful as it can even damage weird alien materials like for example space titanium. Godzilla's atomic breath is even powerful enough to knock monsters like Gigant out of the sky and to do some massive damage to Titanosaurus, enough to knock him into the ocean with just a few shots. Godzilla's atomic breath is also powerful enough to wipe out any UFO or alien advancement weaponry out of the sky, and to not only just wipe out the military in general. So Godzilla 975 is of course 50 meters tall. He's a very skilled physical combatant as he is able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with monsters like Gigant in a physical match and even knock King Ghidorah off of his feet after a few punches and sidesteps. Godzilla in this time period is extremely smart. He's not like 64 where he just walks into a battle and shoots atomic breath. No, this Godzilla actually comes into the fight. He actually runs into battle like he does in Zone Fighter and not makes sure to kind of punch down a monster and throw them in, around in order to wear them down. Godzilla also in this experience has been known to be extremely fast, not as fast as 2004, but to be pretty fast on his feet. So that's basically it for Godzilla 1975. We're not counting Mega Gears in this, right? I just want to get this clear. I mean, if you want to, we can. I mean, it, well, that well, is both, really confusing. Well both, well, both Godzillas exist in a different universe, so I would kind of not conclude it. I yeah. would just make I would just make the Godzilla focus on what it did in the film, just what it did, the variation of it, and what it did in that film, oh, okay. not in previous or after. So the dropkick thing does not matter. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll just solely talk about two thousand, to be honest, because Mega Gear. Yeah, I don't I don't want to get the audience confused with Mega Gears, because it's it's weird how that went. Alright, I'm gonna start right now. Uh, 
Godzilla 2000. Godzilla 2000 starred in the film Godzilla 2000. It had the plot where it was like this giant gray thing in the sky was flying around. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna start again because that was really bad. What was the plot of 2000 again? It was like, alright, so we had Orga, like, he was flying in the sky, and he was, like, a ship. And then, like, he evolved, and he took, like, Godzilla's genes, pretty much. Right? I don't remember. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actually a bit more backstory into this. I forgot the 2000 movie a bit. It's you want me to uh, explain it to you? Yeah, sure. You want me to do the introduction for Godzilla 2000 instead? Yeah, you can do it if you want. Alright, because I love doing oh, the introduction. Oh. Yeah, I forgot, like, the movie pretty much. Like, all I, I remember was Orga Evolved and stuff like that. I haven't seen the movie in months, but I remember it thoroughly. Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't remember. He's just looking okay, at his yeah, 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 you did. Alright. In the new millennium 2000, a new organization had recently found a strange rock in the ocean. But when it was exposed to massive heat from the sun, it suddenly became active. This new creature known as the Millennium soon posed a great threat to the Earth and the Japanese self-defense forces. The thing called the Millennium tried to find a different host for its DNA, DNA genetic material to be based off of. The humans were insufficient as the human genes and pretty much their endurance and overall physicality are very inferior to other beings. So the aliens searched planet Earth for another host and soon it came upon a great creature named Godzilla. This Godzilla, Godzilla 2000, this time period was observed by the Millennium. With his orange atomic breath, he was able to wipe out the Japanese self-defense forces and even consume energy from radiation and electricity. Incredible. It's like he's trying to destroy our energy sources. Godzilla 2000 at this point in time was about 50 meters tall, towering over other skyscrapers. Godzilla's greatest assets were his physical strength as he was able to push back monsters like Orga and to be able to take extreme endurance by getting blasted by, by a cannon by Orga. But note that although Godzilla did take the damage from Orga's cannon, he was knocked out for 40 minutes out of the movie from just one shot from an alien cannon, unlike the show of Godzilla, who would be able to get repeatedly blasted by Mechagodzilla and still be able to fight. That's probably Godzilla 2000's greatest weakness. Although Godzilla is a lot stronger in 2000 because of his atomic breath doing a lot more damage, Godzilla also does have this key point called Regeneration 1. Regenerator G1 is basically Godzilla's cells that help him to regenerate from any amount of damage. Unfortunately. So although Godzilla 2000 can take a lot of damage as 1975 can, he can regenerate faster than 75 can. Another good example about 75 and 2000 similarities was surprisingly, um, more like 74, but surprisingly they both have a similarity. When Godzilla 1974 fought Mechagodzilla, he was knocked out for 40 minutes by a single blast from Mechagodzilla. Godzilla 2000 was knocked out on a single blast by Orga for 40 minutes during the time of the movie. Both Godzillas are shown to get knocked out for long periods of time and be forced to regenerate. Godzilla 1974, however, does have the edge because he can use magnetic pulls by getting struck on his spikes like a magnetic pull that was created during the Mecha Revolution, I guess to say. Yeah, that was basically my thoughts between Godzilla 1974 and Godzilla 2000. Alright, let the fight begin. Okay, but so the magnetic, to be honest, that magnetic power is not going to do anything. Alright, so are we going to start with the fight? Maybe? Okay, so do you want me to give my thoughts on who I think would win? Uh, yeah. Honestly, I think Godzilla 1974 would win. This is why. As you guys can probably see from the clips right here, Godzilla 1974 was an extremely good physical fighter. He also knew how to dish out a lot of damage. Godzilla 2000 is a pretty good fighter, but he doesn't really have much strategy in his attacks, as all he really does is bite, slash, and kind of tail with his opponents. Godzilla 1974 was a much better physical fighter as he knew how to punch opponents from the sky and all around be a better tactician when he saw Mega Godzilla. Unless it's out. Mega Gearus. The body slams. Yeah, that too. The body slams are real.
So can I continue, guys? Alright, just just go back. No, I'm sorry. So overall, I think Godzilla 2000. I mean, would probably lose because overall, Godzilla 2000 had an extremely tough time with Orga in the sense that Orga was basically getting the upper hands on him. Godzilla 1974, however, does have some very powerful atomic threats as it was able to damage even the strongest material at the time, Space Titanium. Godzilla 1974 is also extremely durable as he took multiple blasts to the neck to the point where Godzilla was bleeding. Godzilla was disoriented from single blast by Orga when he wasn't even hit with severe injury, but just knocked into a few buildings or two. Godzilla, on the other hand, he took a lot more damage and was able to dish a lot more damage back, and because I think he's a superior physical fighter. Overall, I think Godzilla 1974 will win. Okay, this is me now. And Hadora, uh, are you gonna say? What? Are you gonna say who do you think you would win? Or do you want me to say first? Hey, you can say first, and I'll say yeah. who I think would win. Alright, I think Godzilla, I agree with Alex, I think Godzilla 1974 will win. Uh, um, honestly, Godzilla 2000, even though he, he has the, like, the ma like, the, uh, what you call it, like, the, like, the height advantage, like, he, he's at 55 meters, he, that doesn't really count for a lot, like, he's not the Heisei Godzilla, where he's, like, towering over, so, and honestly, Godzilla 2000, if you've seen his fighting, he's not really, like, that good at fighting. Like, the only way he actually won, like, with Orga, was just blasting inside of Orga's mouth. But Godzilla 74 is MLG, man. He's, he has magnetic pulses, he, he can, you know, he can do a lot of stuff. And he has, like, he has, he has friends, he's cool, with the kids, man. He's MLG. Don't mess with 74. He will mess you up. And I put, guess like, I'm just the put only him, one. just put him with like the deal with it glasses, like. I, I I'll guess I'm the. I guess I'm the only one that's different here, because I actually personally think that Godzilla 2000 would win. Because, uh, for one, the nuclear pulse that he used against Godzilla, against Orga, was extremely powerful to the point where it pretty much destroyed the area around him and blew up his enemy from the inside. And its regeneration ability is far superior than the one of 75 Godzilla. And also as well that the Godzilla in 75 actually did bleed. He bleed actually um, the first time he fought with Mechagodzilla when he fell in the water. And also the second time he had the altercation with him. Godzilla never bleed before from, um, never bled before from his enemy Orga. As his regeneration ability was able to help him. And I will say that he he does not have the speed advantage, nor um more or the you know melee advantage. But when it comes to more long range attacks or more explosive altercations, he wins in that department. All right, Alex. All right. So okay. honestly, I think um. Dora gave some really excellent points that I actually wasn't anticipating on, saying that Godzilla is able to take damage, but he doesn't really have to endure damage, he can just heal from damage, unlike Godzilla 1975 would be able to, because if you guys remember in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Godzilla had to get some energy from the lightning bolts in order to fully heal himself. Fully. Yeah, pretty good points. Actually, um, Dylan gave such a Kind of opposing this such a good argument i might actually want to disagree i mean agree with him but hmm, i don't know um what do you guys who do you think guys think would win in this battle between the two godzillas post down your comments below remember like share subscribe if you haven't already subscribe to hedora and subscribe to cry lion yeah thank you guys for watching this alex shooting bye <laughs>